everybody and welcome back to Enchanted Bayou. Today I thought that we would go ahead and see what we could find out about the Idaho murders. Now I don't know if you guys know about the Idaho murders so what we are going to do is before we just jump into the spirit box we're going to go over some of the details and some of the facts. Unfortunately there's not a lot of information on this case right now. It just happened about a month and a half ago on Sunday, November 13th of this year of 2022. So we don't have a lot of facts. The police really aren't saying much. What they are saying is a little bit of mixed messages. So I'm going to give you the facts of what we do know and then we'll jump into the spirit box. That way anyone who isn't familiar with this has a chance to kind of get caught up before we start asking spirits, basically, <laughs> what, um, what maybe some details we can find out. So let's go ahead and jump into this. On Sunday, November 13th of 2022, there was a quadruple homicide of four University of Idaho college students. Now their names are Ethan Chapin, uh, Zana Kernodal, Madison Mogan, and Kaylee Con Gonclaves. The four of them were actually staying in a three-story home off campus with six bedrooms. It was quite a large home. This is an important detail that we need to note here. This house was actually on a hill. So I'll go ahead and put some pictures in here so you can see this exact house. But the house was up on a hill and so it had some weird entrances into it. It had actually two entrances. The first one was on the first main floor and it was like any typical house that you'd walk up to and entrance. The second one was a sliding glass door and in the back of the house and this sliding glass door it went into the second floor. That's where police actually believe that the killers entered or killer we don't know if there's one or two we haven't even heard anything like that from police whether they suspect one or multiple people for this murder but yeah, hopefully that's something that we can find out talking to my spirit guides. I do have two guides. Their names are Ethan and E, and we will be talking to them very soon. Now, before we get into that, though, let's talk about this house. On the first floor, there were two roommates that lived on the first floor. Their names were Bethany and Dylan. Now, Bethany and Dylan were not harmed. They were home that night. They were asleep in their beds, and they didn't hear anything that had happened. On the second floor was the girl Zanna and she lived on the second floor. She was 20 years old and her boyfriend Ethan was staying over and he was also murdered that night. And then on the third floor was Madison and Kaylee's rooms and they were hanging out in Maddie's room that night and they were both murdered in Maddie's room. Now let's start with Saturday, November 12th and work our way up into how we get into Sunday and the murders. Saturday during the day on November 12th, the group took this photo together and Kaylee posted online that she was happy to be hanging out with such wonderful people basically is what she said. Everything seemed to be going good. Now, one of the girls did have a stalker, I believe it was Kaylee, and she had a stalker in the past, but the police have checked that out and that didn't really seem to pan out according to what we hear. Just a little side note in there for you in case you are one of the people really following this case. Now, that night, Zana and Ethan, they decided that they would go out to a frat party and the frat party was only a few minutes away from their house, but they went out to a frat party. Now, Maddie and Kaylee, they went out to a local sports bar and they were hanging out there. They went out around 10 o'clock or so that night. Zana and Ethan, they went out maybe to the frat party around 8 o'clock is the estimate there. It was about 1 o'clock in the morning when Bethany and Dylan arrived separately, but they arrived back home to their house. And then the next thing on the timeline that we know is around 1.30 in the morning, Maddie and Kaylee are spotted at a food truck ordering some food and the food truck was actually live streaming I guess their business because they typically do that so we do have video of Kaylee and Maddie ordering food at the food truck. Now there seems to be a suspicious guy with a hoodie in the back but the police have cleared the guy with the hoodie in the back who's acting kind of a little strange and said that he is not a suspect at this time. 
then at 1.45, Xana and Ethan arrive back to the house as well. And at about 1.55 is when Maddie and Kaylee, they had taken a ride share home from the food truck and they arrive back at the house too. Now, between 2.26 and 2.52 a.m., the girls, Maddie and Kaylee, were hanging out, we believe, in Maddie's room, and because that's the room that they were murdered in, were trying to get a hold of Kaylee's ex-boyfriend, Jack. And Kaylee had called him like six times, Maddie called him, I believe, three times, and then Kaylee called him one final time at 2.52. And from there, we don't know what happened. The police say that somewhere between three and five in the morning, the four kids, and it, I call them kids because they're, they're like 20 and 21, there's college kids. But the four students, they were actually murdered. And again, that was Ethan and Zana, and Madison and Kaylee. And they were murdered in their rooms. Ethan and Zana were in Zana's room and Maddie and Kaylee were in Maddie's room. What we do know are two main facts that the police have actually given us so far. The first is that they were murdered with a what's called a kabar knife and I'll put a picture up of this knife but this knife an expert told Fox News that this knife actually dulls very quickly with that kind of force that it would take to murder people with and that hopefully that the person who was yielding the knife would actually have injured themselves with the knife. We don't know yet, but if they sort the blood out, I'm hoping from everything that I've seen at least that maybe the killer's blood is actually mixed in with the student's blood and they will eventually be able to catch this guy. Uh, but that's just from an expert from Fox News. The other thing that we do know is that the police are looking for a car that was spotted on a gas station's like camera system at around 3.45 in the morning. And it is a white Hyundai Elantra from 2011 to 2013. And really guys, that's all we know about this case. There's a couple people like maybe an ex-boyfriend here or there or whatever, but the police have checked out everyone that they have gotten tips from and everything so far. And so far, they don't have a suspect. They haven't arrested anyone and they're not telling the community anything. So here we are. I thought that we would do a spirit box session because that's what I'm good at doing and see if we could find out any information. Um, I'm a little hesitant to do this sometimes because this is gonna sound so crazy, but there was one time that I did this trying to find a little missing girl and my spirits were wrong. And so I don't want them to be wrong in this situation, but for the most part, they're actually pretty good and they're actually right about a lot of things. But I thought instead of just asking my spirit guides that we would try and get them to bring forth Ethan, Santa, Madison, or Kaylee, or all of them and be able to talk to them. So that's what we're going to do. Now, if you're new here, let's talk about how my channel works. I do have two spirit guides. Their names are Ethan and E, and you will hear them come through all the time. I think this might be a little confusing because one of the kids that was murdered was named Ethan, but we're gonna do our best. But I do not cut and edit my spirit box sessions when it comes to cases like this. So they're gonna be 100% raw, and they're also very loud. And the noise from the spirit box is, it just sucks, just flat out wanna say that. The spirit box that I use is what's called a PSB7, and you'll see it in pretty much every ghost show that you could ever imagine watching. This is the tried and true spirit box, but it does get very loud. I also do have a professional review all of my spirit box sessions. He was in the Navy for 10 years and his job was basically to listen to what was coming through the radio and in a sense spy on other foreign countries for our country's security. That's what he did and he reviews all these to make sure that what I hear is correct and also add anything extra maybe that he finds as well in the spirit box sessions. Then if someone needs help crossing over, Ethan and E will always do that. They are amazing, they're wonderful, and they will always do that. 
after we're finished talking to someone. Again, spirit box noise, really, really loud. So if you're wearing headphones, I really recommend that you adjust the volume because it's going to get loud. So let's go ahead and get into this. I'm gonna set the spirit box session and I will be right back. one of them was ready to be done talking because one of them came through really really clear and was very very vocal 
So yeah, so that's a spirit box session. At this point, you guys would have seen everything that I heard or that my professional has heard all through here. And I hope you guys are doing great. I hope maybe we got some answers out of this. Of course, at this point, I don't know, but I will know soon. I can't wait to hear this back. Hope everyone's doing good. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and like the channel. I, it really helps me out a great deal. So I really, truly appreciate it and love you guys. I will talk to you soon. Bye.